Hey guys, we just had our CPI report for the month and of course our annual report in that and some very interesting news came out of that. I have it written down right here. Our CPI number came in below expectation, which is now at 5%. And this signifies something that is at a critical point in uh, the trek that the Fed has had to bring down inflation. I wanna explain why today, when this report came out or whenever you're watching this, why this time is so important. So I'm gonna use two different colors today to explain this. The first color I'm going to explain is CPI, which will be in red. And the second color I'm gonna talk about will be in blue, which is the Fed funds rate. And what I first want you to understand is CPI. What does that stand for? It stands for the Consumer Price Index. Simply put, it's what you and I spend money on. Our consumer prices, are they going up or are they going down? Now, CPI has dropped over these last uh, over this last quarter and a half from 8% down to 5%. This is a reduction of 3% in our current inflation. This is really important because as you guys know, the Federal Reserve has raised rates at the fastest rate in history in order to try to curb inflation, to avoid hyperinflation and even bigger segregation of the wealthy and the non-wealthy. Now, what's important about this is that CPI, think about it going back to say 2019. Let's go back to 2019. So this is 2019 pre-COVID, the average CPI, the average inflation level is 2%. That's where the Fed wants to keep it. What they want to do is they want to keep the economy growing, not too fast, not too slow. 2% has always been that number. So it comes in and then suddenly something happens. You guys remember it. It's called COVID. Everybody was out of work. We didn't know what was happening. Lots was going on. And this line represents inflation at 2% and then a, a very short period of time of a deflationary era. And then suddenly what happened? Stimulus, unemployment, PPP, SBA, you name it. Tons of different things happened to do what to the money supply? Increase it at the fastest rate in history. When there's more money available in the economy, what happens? We spend it. We buy houses, we buy cars, we buy boats, we go on vacations, we go out to eat more. And inflation started to go up. Now, at this time, a second thing was happening. It has to do with the federal funds rate. The Fed has to control this rate. Think about this rate as the control arm of all of your rates of borrowing. If you guys want to have lower rates on your mortgages, it's got to be a lower Fed funds rate. Uh, we all want to have lower rates on our mortgages, our car loans, our business loans, our whatever it is. We want to have lower rates. If you want to have a higher rate on your personal savings account, you need to have a higher federal funds rate. The federal funds rate, simply put, controls money supply. The higher it goes, the less you want to borrow, the more you want to save. The lower it goes, the more you want to borrow and spend, the less you want to save. Why this is important is the Fed knows this. This is what it looked like pre-pandemic. Inflation and the federal funds rate were not necessarily exactly on top of each other, but they were near each other. And then what happened was COVID hits and they suddenly have to make an adjustment. We crossed. The federal funds rate was below the rate of inflation. They did that to do what? Incentivize you to go out there and buy things. Because you're not buying for the cost of something. Most people don't go in and say, I wanna buy this car for $35,000. They go in and say, what's my monthly payment? It's all to do with borrowing the federal funds rate. And then they kept the rate low, and then suddenly they realized, oh boy, we got some catching up to do. The economy is a little bit too hot. And so what they did at that point in time is they started raising the federal funds rate at literally the fastest rate in history. Now, in doing that, rates go up. People say, wait a minute, I can't get my mortgage for 2.7% anymore. Now it's three and a half, now it's four. It starts to go up. People slow down their spending. So what happened is inflation started to come over. It started to curb up until today or whenever you're watching this video, 5%. So now, we are at 5% for the red line, current inflation. Now, the reason this is important, guys, is that through this, what else happened? I'll actually redraw this just a little bit so you really can see an example. This was extended slightly longer, right here. And then they started to roll up. Right around the time it starts to curve, they start to roll up on inflation, or I'm sorry, on the federal funds rate to bring inflation down. Why is today so important? Today is so important because we are at a critical point in this trajectory. 
the federal funds rate is exactly equal to the inflation rate. Right now, in May, the expectation is that we will go up another 0.25 basis points. 25 basis points, excuse me, 0.25%. This leads our federal funds rate up to 5.25%. Now, if inflation even continues at half the pace that we see right now, we will drop back down to 4.8, 4.7, somewhere in that area percent on current levels of inflation. So why is that important? Once the Fed sees their rate get up above in a healthy manner, above inflation, which is what you see right here happening very soon, that signals the crossover. This is so important because this is signaling that we are getting ahead of inflation. And now what do you see? The Fed funds rate higher than inflation. That means as the rate's high, the cost of borrowing is going to be very expensive. The cost of saving is going to give you a higher yield. So less people are going to be borrowing, more people are gonna be saving. So if we have a 5.25% uh, Fed funds rate, and we have a, say, a 4.5% inflation, what's gonna to happen to our marginal savings on a high yield savings account? It's gonna be around 4%. If I'm able to save money at 4%, inflation's gonna be at 4.8, 4.7, 4.5, 4.4, 4.0. .4, .4. It's eventually gonna get down. My saving rate, inflation rate are gonna be exactly the same. That's very rare that we see that happen, meaning that you're not making money, you're not losing money finally. So this is such a critical point that I want you guys to pay attention to because this signals this area here, actually I'll grab a black marker. This area here now post, call it May, June, July, August, September, et cetera. What do we expect to happen? Well, we expect them to stop raising rates. We expect a pause to happen throughout the year. We expect this to continue dropping to the downside, that is inflation. And then eventually, by the end of the year, early next year, we expect them to finally chase that. The point I'm trying to make is once they've done this, they've, they've really gotten a grasp on inflation. And the good news is, is that we should see this start to continue to fall down. So I, hopefully, this explanation makes sense. Very simple on a blackboard or a whiteboard, excuse me, for you guys to understand this. Now, what we're trying to do on this channel, guys, is give you guys all the content that you deserve and that you need to make better decisions in the markets. This is going to impact the markets in different ways. We'll talk about that in future videos. The point I'm trying to make is, guys, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. I don't take it for granted. Thank you for clicking that like button. Comment down below what you learned in this video. And of course, we're about to hit 20,000 subscribers, so I can't thank you enough. If you haven't already clicked the subscribe button, sign into your YouTube account or create a YouTube account. Click that subscribe button. I'd appreciate it immensely. And we'll see you guys on the next video.